I have a weakness for this kind of topic. I get very attracted to anything sentimental about the relationship between children and parents. The characters become these human beings who are all striving for a place to belong, a place to be loved, a place to be seen, a place to find human respect and self-respect. When I read the script, I was like, this is like authentically written from a perspective of queer and drag. This actually feels like real people who live in the community and breathe it. I could not believe it wasn't written by a trans person. That was shocking to me. It made so much sense to me. It was as if someone had written the first 10 years of my transition. I never feel like I'm acting. I'm literally in memory. The other part I really loved about it was the regional specificity of it being in Toronto, and really celebrating Toronto, because it's a city that I grew up in and it's a city that I have sadly noticed uh, the disappearance of queer spaces at, even from when I was a teenager. So the story felt really pertinent but also very personal. I really, really, really wanted to you know, take queer elements from certain places in history or our queer history and really bring them forward with specific characters. Each character has such a definitive look to them. Even reading the script you get a sense of who every single character is. Because I didn't want them all to look like they were from the same generation. Because drag has been around for so many years. It's impossible to represent every single element of drag that exists. Everybody's their own color, everyone is their own character, but together they make this like really awesome little multicolor rainbow in your hand. We're really creating living art with each character. Working with Reem felt like Nothing I have really experienced before. The fact that it was an Arab woman director, it was that level of being familiar with someone. We are laughing all day. It's so much fun to have this kind of energy on set. It's a very different kind of environment than many film sets that I've been on. You know when you walk in for the first, you know, your first day on set and within like an hour you're laughing and giggling and finding a sense of humor and going, oh, okay. We're gonna be okay. The diversity of this production behind the camera and in front of the camera is so groundbreaking. And I come to work every day feeling an extra level of safety with everyone who's involved. It's a very, very special crew. We've been able to like really check in with each other whenever we have like harder scenes because obviously there's there's quite a few scenes in this film that are kind of triggering for queer and genderqueer people. It's always been incredibly important for us to think about how we are crewing up for a show like this. It's not enough to represent certain stories on screen. They have to be informed by lived experiences of the people putting those stories together. So when we were pitching this project to crew members and looking for like our team, the first thing that we started doing was we, we were going to the community. Who's working in drag? Who knows the culture? Who knows the performers? Drag is this really beautiful vehicle for, for storytelling. And I think it, it attracts a, a wide audience because it is so diverse and plentiful in, in terms of how drag stories are told. Societally, we are given to, to hide those parts of ourselves that might not be considered acceptable. And drag says, screw acceptable, live your life with love, respect for yourself and others, but in full bloom. It's a really interesting conversation trying to navigate the intersection of, of queerness, drag, and being trans, because a lot of misconceptions are that drag queens are trans, or that all dra trans people are doing drag. It doesn't work like that. Trans is who you are and drag is what you do. This is kind of a film that's gonna break a lot of boundaries and seeing two men fall in love, both of them Egyptian, is quite rare. I just hope that like people watch this film, kids can watch this film and see that other Arab queer people exist and that we're okay and we're doing okay. But then also maybe their parents watch this film and are okay having a conversation with them or even them getting the the courage to be able to have a conversation with their parents. It would be easy to think of this as a coming of age story. Really, it's about the metaphors any being who's trying to discover what's really inside them. Letting all of yourself in whatever degree be as inevitable as breathing. Nabil's story is really a story about reconciling with who he is, accepting who he is, and loving who he is. I want to help 
tell this story in the truest way possible because I firmly believe that this has zero to do with queerness and everything to do with wholeness. I think globally, when people receive the underlying message of this film, it doesn't matter who they're in love with. It doesn't matter who they go to bed with. It doesn't matter how they dress. It doesn't matter how they walk down the street. I don't care what their politics are, where they've been, where they're going, who they were, who they're gonna be. This is about wholeness. How do you allow your brokenness to be true so that more light can shine through? That's the soul of this film. It's that evolution from just being able to live and be yourself to being able to thrive. We see family. It's all versions of family and life striving to maintain the right to be their family, not telling anyone how to live their life or how to be part of their own group, but how to find the dignity of the group that is their own and who they welcome in, which is anyone who wants to come with an open heart. It's a story that has a lot of heart, and I think most people will find something that they can relate to in the story. You don't have to know drag culture to want to see this movie.